So call to order at 639 um, in Roxbury for the Board of School Directors meeting. Um, first item is public comment, and we have members of the public. You guys observing, or do you want to do you have anything to say? You Just don't observing. Didn't have to. Okay. Yeah, for now. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Thanks for coming. Um, consent agenda, and I know that Tina um, already raised an issue that we can. Could we pull the administrative contracts off the consent agenda? Yes, and I also think we should probably put them in executive, executive session. session. Yeah. And just to make a note, we are um, we are going to have the board and superintendent perform well, at least the superintendent performance review in executive session, um, and then we can discuss the contracts then. Um, and negotiations stuff. And it's just yeah, yeah. lots yeah. of contracts stuff. stuff and was it Andrew just there? He'll yeah. be right back. The okay. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. Um, the bathroom door doesn't close, by the way. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Let's have to go in the room. The one there. It's like <laughs> it's off kilter and it won't. I'll make note yeah. of that and fix it. The too. door hits the frame. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Um, and, th and then another order of business just before the consent agenda. The we have a meeting scheduled for April seventeenth, which is um, during the spring break. So how do we do that? Huh? How do we do that? Just the every first and third. Um, I have them I think we changed it to the tenth, didn't we? Did we? I think we're scheduled for the third and the tenth. Yeah, that's okay. what I ever did. That's what I was gonna bring up. Libby, neither Livy nor I had it on their calendars as the tenth, and it's not on the tenth of the district. The tenth in Roxbury, I. That's what okay. I as well, yeah. So that's what it will be, and that's the date that worked better for you, right? Yep. Yeah. Because you're jetting back on the twenty fourth. Okay. Perfect. Um, so we went a little meander there. Um, so. Motion to move the consent agenda we'll with a, with yeah, Tina's motion amendment. To approve the consent agenda without the administrative contract. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We have a quorum, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Good check. What? Good check. <laughs> yeah. <well. laughs> there are some empty seats. Uh, so, learning focus, school safety update. Sure. Let me plug in my computer here. So Jim asked me to put together a little presentation of the um, changes we've made in school safety or where we are with school safety. And feel free to interrupt with questions. <laughs> what we've done, what we found when we got, when the new leadership took over in July, and what we've done so far, um, and a little bit of where, where else we plan to go. So when we stepped in, we being, uh, myself and Andrew LaRosa in particular, the director of facilities, we targeted safety as an immediate need, an immediate concern area. Um, it, had, it had not been looked at across the district. Across the district. So we started putting eyes on it because we're immersed and we needed to know safety from Roxbury and safety from Montpelier. Um, and we recognized not only were Montpelier schools in Roxbury vastly different in what they were doing, um, but also our Montpelier schools were vastly different in what they were doing. So we immediately targeted this. Um, when we came in July 2018, there was no district-wide safety committee. That's an AOE requirement. Um, there wasn't one in place. Uh, so we began one. <laughs> um, <laughs> We, we had no district-wide plans. We had no common language. We had no con accountability or monitoring for anything that was happening. It was, it was school-specific completely and totally. Um, some schools were changing to match standards, the, the current standards. Some were holding tight and true to standards that were well beyond their, their age. Um, so we had none of that in place. Uh, we had t uh, many outside doors in all four of our buildings and fire doors that weren't working properly in buildings. Um, 
particularly at the high school for the fire doors, also in the elementary schools, we had no secondary communication system between the buildings, so if our phone went out, we couldn't talk to each other unless we just happened to have cell phones on, and those were available, but of course cell phone usage doesn't work here in Roxbury at the school. Um, so that was a major concern for us. We had lack of internet safety procedures. There was ba basically nothing to protect kids on the internet, um, nothing system-wide. So we had teachers just buying apps and whatever and not thinking about whether or not it sold student data or whether or not it was safe for kids or you know anything like that. So we had none of that in place. We were lacking an emergency notification system. So um, this was in, in um, this was starting before our time, but we didn't have one when we stepped in, and so now we have the swift, what you all get when you get snow, snow day announcements, we all have that now. That's brand new this year. There was no articulated closing procedures, so it was, um, it was basically, in the past, my understanding was the superintendent, and nobody knew until he actually made that call, so now we have, between Mike Barry and myself, we have a protocol to, to follow every single time, so it's the same every single time that we have a delay, snow closure, any kind of emergency where we have to access that system. We've also, we also made it so that that system is for pretty, pretty tight on emergencies only. Emergencies or information that I need to give to, to schools. We're not, you know, allowing parent groups to notify people through it. We're not, no, we're not notifying about basketball games where it's basically emergency closures or emergency information. We made a conscious decision to do that. Some schools don't do that. We decided to do that because sometimes people start to ignore it if it gets to be used too much, and we don't want that to happen. So that's why. Um, we had emergency equipment, some emergency equipment in place and some not in place, and emergency equipment that we did have in place, it hadn't been trained on, or people, nobody in the building knew how to use it because the last training was like 15 years ago. Um, so there's like lift chairs in all of our buildings that have second floors. They hadn't been taken actually out of the wall in many, many, many years. So we had emergency, some emergency equipment. We had, didn't have defibrillators in our schools. Um, we had no bleed kits, that kind of thing. We didn't have ba a background check system for volunteers and chaperones. It's Vermont law that anybody who's unsupervised with students needs to have a background check in place, um, and that wasn't happening. Um, I, that was happening here at Roxbury. It was not happening in the Montpelier system. We actually stole the system Roxbury was using for Montpelier. Um, and our doorways were blocked with furniture. <laughs> Many of you not like totally blocked, but Partial. like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if there was ever an emergency and people had to get out fast, there would have been a complete pile up at the door because there wasn't enough room to move. Um, Libby, so that was from fire. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. It sounded like some people just arrived. I'm not sure if they know where to find us. Oh, there you are. Come on. <laughs> Don't go down the dark hall. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. So that's what Spot we, here. Yeah. That's what yeah. we found when we came chair. to. Um, that's Libby's. Put my chair down. And when we started in July, that yeah. was the position yeah. that Andrew and I and Mike Barry with the technology found ourselves in. And just for Bridget and Michelle's benefit. Um, if you take a quick scan of the slide, those are all the things that when Libby came in July, we did not have in place that needed to be in place. <laughs> so needless to say, we had a um, pretty big job to do. <laughs> I can remember one of my first meetings with my mentor and he said, okay, do you have your safety committee? I said, my what? <laughs> my safety, your safety committee. I said, no, we don't have a safety committee. He's like, there must be one in play. And I said, don't think so. And he, <laughs> he said, well, go check on that. So I went back and said, Heather, what's our safety committee? Yeah, we don't have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we put that in place. I Actually, Andrew is the one who is the facilitator of that. With, oops, sorry. <laughs> with um, my, with I'm a support person in that. I wanted Andrew to take the, the main role in that, so it would give him a, a different way to get to know our buildings. Um, so that was a very cognizant decision. So Andrew has he was he this was not his forte. He's learned a lot um, and done a good job with that. So since July 2018, I broke this presentation up into different pieces. So within our infrastructure, all of our outside doors and fire doors are fixed and now up to code. Um, that was Tom Allen and Andrew really on that right away. Um, so that happened very quickly. 
We purchased high quality radios for each school, and I have one in my office, Mike Berry has one in his office, um, that can actually communicate between all four schools. So they even work from Union to Roxbury, or Central mm -hmm. Office to Roxbury. So should our communication ever go down, all of the administrators know that we can turn on the radios. Also, this, the buildings use them. So you might see principals and assistant principals have those radios on their belt because they're, we put multiple radios in schools so that the administration could, come, could talk to each other, which would come in handy if, we, if the kid's hiding in the bathroom or you know, and we're, we're here on the search, that becomes handy. Um, so we do have that in place. We now have defibrillators in each of our buildings. Um, and we almost had to use one, scarily, in central office this year. So I'm glad those are there. Uh, bleed kits are on the way. What bleed kits are are the um, tourniquet kits. Mm -hmm. um, and after a lot of these horrible school shootings have happened, the when they when emergency response goes in, they say lives could have been many lives could have been saved if they had just had bleed kits and people were trained to use them because you could put a quick tourniquet on and then gone to some place somebody else. Um, so those are on the way. This has been a big push by the fire department in Montpelier for us mm -hmm. to get. And um, Bob has made sure that that purchase order is in and they should be here soon, so we'll, we'll all be trained in the lead kits. Not something you'd like to think about, but, yeah. but, it's, but it's just a reality that we now have. Um, and by all, do you mean all staff or? Not all staff will be trained um, in the lead kits, but we'll have enough for plenty of people should that ever need. But, you know, staff who would most likely be in the building in that time and and available so all nurses all principals all kind of behavior interventionists and you know guidance and social work and that kind of thing will all be trained in the bleed kits it's i don't think it's very difficult training at all um let's see here the chairlifts that i was speaking to training has already taken place um in some instances and it's scheduled to take place in other instances so we'll know how to use those chairs. We do have a, a few kiddos that we need to know how to use those chairs because in an emergency they wouldn't be able to get downstairs faster or they wouldn't be able to use an elevator. Um, all doorways are not fire code. Furniture has been removed from the doorways. So we went room by room by room with Bob and Matt Nicely, Andrew and myself, and talked to teachers about what needed to be removed and what needed to be cleared up so that we don't have that, that situation anymore. Um, in regards to technology, we now have that SWIFT emergency closure up and running. It's called SWIFT. You all don't need to know that. It's just what it's called. Um, and we also have a procedure in place for emergency and weather cancellations. So once that decision is made, I'm on it with Mike Berry. Mike Berry's contacting the principals. He's putting it up on social media. I'm using the SWIFT, and I'm putting it up on WCAX. But we have that, like, a well-oiled machine at this point <laughs> in the air. <laughs> Lots of practice. <laughs> Um, so we have that procedure in place. We recently, this is very recently, signed on with Social Sentinel. This is not in place yet, but we just um, worked out a deal with them. Social Sentinel monitors all social media for threats made to the school community. So Matt, this was a big one for Matt Nisley, our, our resource officer, to have in place. He, it was a big push for him um, because it's been found across the U.S. that many um, potential shooting events have been averted because of school central. So that was a big push for the police department for us to get, and we've recently signed on with them. We also have partnered with Vermont Student, Student Privacy Alliance, and I may have spoken about this before. They're a vetting group for internet sites and apps with the lens of selling student data. Um, we had a large percent of, of the apps on our student devices that were selling our students' data. Um, so we now have this, this group, that basically does the vetting for us of whether an app does that or not and um, can, tell, can tell us not to use it. Tell us exactly what they do with student data and whether or not we make the choice. In addition to this piece right here, now all app purchases go through the Director of Technology before it was pretty loose with that piece. Now Mike has to approve everything so that he can ensure that it's, it's student data and privacy is not being um, used in a way we don't want it to. And then we also have, we've talked about that this before as a board, but a uh, procedure for background checks and volunteers. And Heather's got a data, Heather and Tracy have a database in, in their computers so that we know who's gotten it, who hasn't gotten it, how long it lasts, and all of that kind of piece. And we've gotten an influx of people coming in to get fingerprinted, right? <laughs> Even I know the procedure at this point. 
Um, so in regards to technology, we're looking much better than we were when we came in. Our district-wide safety committee meets once a, once a um, month. Again, it's led by Andrew and it's a requirement of the AOE. All four principals are on it. I am on it. The director of curriculum and technology is on it. Grant is on it as the business manager. Andrew is director of facilities. Matt Nisley is our safety officer. And um, Bob comes as much as he can to, to this meeting. Um, our goals for this school year are to build common language and approach to emergency situations. So like I said before, all four buildings use different commands for emergency situations. It gets difficult with staff that shares buildings because um, they don't know which command is which. Um, they were using the same term to mean different things uh, between buildings, and that's just not okay. We need to standardize that. And at this time and place and where we are with um, violence at schools, there's a national response, national calls that, that police know and fire know that we weren't there. We weren't at that spot. So Matt was having to, know, having to memorize everything for each building and in a chaotic situation I do not want Matt thinking about where he is and which code means what right I don't want him thinking about that nor do I want our principals to be thinking about that so we're we have common language and a common approach to emergency situations so that all four of our principals know if a if a building needs to be evacuated they know where that where the building goes they know they know where the kids are going to be they know who's going to call who on the phone tree so if Main Street has to evacuate People over there are going to talk to the people at the high school. This just happens, so we can be we know how to con get the high school involved in that conversation as well. Um, we have we have building we're building that plan for emergency evacuations. Um, we have multiple sites around Montpelier and Roxbury. One in Roxbury is where kids go um, for emergency evacuations should the need arise. We will practice that. Um, not now, but <laughs> eventually we will practice that with the kids that piece of evacuating to those spaces so that we can test out timing and we can test out what what do we need to think about that we're not thinking about right now um, so we will test that possibly in the spring or fall next year and we're just creating clarity in the procedures between the buildings that's a big piece andrew with tracy's help in our office is working on an enormous binder that has you know, the emergency contact for anybody you could possibly think of mental health agencies um, community liaisons, like I know Jim's number's on there. So it's just a, a wide range of people, should there ever be an emergency, that it's at the tip of our fingers. All of us will just have that to be able to pull from, and if one of us can't get to it, another one can, and it's got the same information on it. In addition, it will have maps of every campus, and it will have the route kids take for emergencies and that kind of thing. And of course, that binder is a private binder, it's a confidential binder, because we wouldn't want anybody to ill means to get their hands on it. Um, so we're forming that right now um, to make sure that everything is in place. A major goal of this team is one that nobody likes to talk about. Um, so the latest guidance from not only the AOE, um, but also national um, safety officers is to go with an options-based approach. So there was a guidance document that I'm more than happy to share with you. From 2015, and when Rebecca Holcomb was, was at, the, at the head, that all Vermont schools should be using an options-based approach for emergency situa situations. We, were, we are not in this camp. We did not go for this route. We didn't make that switch. Every other school district in the state, I believe, has. Um, so we're just now making the shift. And so what options, what we were, what teachers were trained in before was that should there ever be an emergency situation, you hide. You hide, you get your kids, you hide, right, in your classroom. You shut the doors, shut the blinds, hide, you're silent. Um, and that was it. There was no other option than that. I was never trained in any other option than that as a teacher. Um, but what they found with, with the horror that's happening in our schools is that since teachers are trained in doing that, they do that, and they're sitting ducks. So what the options based is to train teachers that you have options, and you need to use your professional judgment in the moment. Um, and so some of them are barricade that door, right? If you, if you can't get out safely and you can't get your kids out safely, then put stuff in front of that door, right? Um, run to safety would be another option. Roxbury has doors in all of their classrooms, right? Get out and get going if you can. Um, that would have never been an option before. And have a spot where you all meet 
you know, where there's a safe to meet. Um, another option would be to hide. Like, I don't list them all here, but just the idea that there are multiple options that a teacher's going to use in, their, in that situation and to train them on that. Um, there's many programs out there that have this training. The one that Vermont primarily is using, that I haven't actually heard of anybody not using this, is the ALICE program. It's called ALICE. Um, so that's what our principals are most comfortable with. We have ALICE trainers. We have, we have three or four ALICE trainers. Ryan Herity is, Pam is, Matt Roy is. There's a YouTube video, I don't know if you've seen it, which is um, Run, Hide, Fight, and it's from, from Alice, Alice, and anybody can watch it. It's a good yep. premise of what you do. Yeah. Um, and I have to be quite, I'll be blatantly honest with you. This is an area that I am not comfortable in, and I'm not talk, comfortable talking about, and I think of my kids, and I don't want them, and I don't want them practicing this. You know, I have young kids. Um, I had a hard time in my former district because I fight like to the nails with my superintendent who wanted to go full board. Like there's lots of different options yeah. you can do. <laughs> Um, wanted to go full bore and I said as a mother if you had my kids doing that I'd be so angry with you um, so this is hard for me so that we're at this stage but we have to act, we have to have to do this um, it's just it's it's what people say is best practice now to keep as many pe teachers kids safe as we possibly can um, so the team the administrative team has decided on using the Alice program so we still have some questions that we're working on right now um, when to do the training, when to officially switch all the language. We haven't officially done that, so it's not on the back of our cards yet. The old language is still on the back of some of our cards. Um, and to what extent do we involve the students? That's possibly the biggest question for me to um, handle. I think about my mother who did bomb dip drills and you know was underneath the desk with her head, you know, and that she can t tell me that like almost verbatim as to what the teacher used to say to her and what she felt and all that kind of things. And I, I don't want my kids feeling that. So, um, so that's a big question for us. I think that might be a question for the community. Yeah. Just, I mean, to yeah. have a conversation with parents about mm -hmm. what that training might look like and how comfortable would they be with their kids doing it and and how is it we different for different age levels? How we can, mm -hmm. what yes. say, how we scale it to different ages. And, yeah. I yeah, know, I know. Mrs. Like Mello in the kinder in the kindergarten teacher at Union used to tell the kids um, for the clear the halls. No, there's a skunk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we need to go in the closet because there's, there's a skunk in the hall, and yeah. you don't want to get sprayed by the skunk. This year, I think somebody, somebody, one of the kindergarten teachers, maybe Mrs. Mello, talked about um, that there was a dog that was out of control, and we needed to keep you safe yeah. from yeah. that dog that was out of control. So there are different ways to talk to different levels of kids. Um, like I was, I was in, again, I was in plenty of debates over this in my former district and, and the, I can remember the high school principal saying, well, the high school kids would want to fight. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care if they want to fight or not. I don't want them to. Yeah. You know, like we, that's not what I want to teach them. Um, I want the teachers to know what to do in this situation. Um, and, and kids will listen to the adults around them because teachers will know what to do. Kids will be texting their parents. Yes. Yeah. Which is what happened last year. Last year. Mm -hmm. Right. Was Kids will be texting their siblings at the middle school, and exactly. the whole middle school will fall apart because. Yeah. And that's why we need to have that communication system between the schools, right? So that the middle school can get on the loudspeaker and say, it's okay, things will be fine. You know, we're well aware of the situation to calm anxiety a little bit. So these are, this is a huge question. Yeah. And so I don't want. I don't want anybody to come away face thinking that we're not taking that question incredibly seriously because we are. Um, and quite honestly, I think as a superintendent in terms of we need to get this in place and we need to do it well. And I think of a mom of what do I want my kids to know in that situation. And those two things sometimes are at odds. <laughs> Um, so it's a it's a real struggle for me there too, um, but that's a this is a piece that will be part of our work um, for that June now professional day on Monday. Um, one of the ideas that's being floated we have to do a full day training with Alice in, in all of our buildings, and one of the ideas is to use that day to do Alice training um, with the, with the staff, which I think would be probably a good use of that day. It may not happen for that day, but that's one of the things we're thinking about. Um, so anyway, questions. Can you tell me, Libby, I've lost track of the timeline, but Governor Scott got some money to do yes, a statewide grants. assessment of all of the school safety issues, mm -hmm. and he's going to make 
resolve any problems that might have existed. Mm -hmm. Have we had any assessment by AOE? Has anything come of? Um, we, not that I know that we've had assessment, we've gotten the safety grant money and a lot of that construction will be happening this spring and fall. Okay. So we have, um, I forgot what it's called, but I think here um, at the middle school and at the elementary school at the front of the doors where people come in the most. So here, this is a good example. It's just a one entryway and once person, a person is in, they're in, right? You could close that door going down to the classrooms, but this is wide open and everything. Um, it's to op it's to make another door, so somebody has to go through, be let into that door, and then be let into another door. Um, I can't remember what's that that's called. It's totally blanking on me right now. A breezeway, I don't know. Yeah, a breezeway <laughs> or an airlock. <laughs> or an airlock. Or... <laughs> <laughs> so there's two doors, for example, at the high school, but the buzzer is outside of the first door. Right. And you get in both. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The yeah. high school they didn't approve our funding to fix that up, which was really interesting. Oh, we didn't understand huh. why, but they did at the other three buildings. Oh. So the other three buildings should have that in place. And there's mm -hmm. a few other pieces of the safety grant. But what what happens between the first door and the second door? I mean, it's like four feet. Double around and slows somebody down, and you'll have a video of the person. Oh, I see. Because it, it just slows somebody down. Right. Yeah, it won't is keep it, them out. It, it just slows them down. Here's my take on a lot of this, and I could probably be um, upset it's people It's not for like this. if the, you know, if Kim lets somebody through the first door, as they take the two steps to the second door, she's not going to change her mind about right. letting them in the second right. door. And I think a lot of some, some of the things that are being suggested for safety are false senses of safety. Okay. Um, so I think about it in... The school I was assistant principal and co-principal in in Essex had a school shooting the year before I came, two years before I came. That person, the staff knew him. The staff mm -hmm. would have buzzed him in automatically. Yeah. But they knew him. It was a the former boyfriend of a yeah. teacher or something. So it, yeah, so like, they wouldn't even thought twice to buzz him in. And I know that because I'm friends with the ladies who, you know, they right, were my, right. my assistants. Right. Actually, that superintendent has said to me he wished that the buzzer wasn't there because someone actually let them in yeah. <laughs> and so oh, right. it's a purposeful yeah and then you think about like look at this room that we're in right now this is a first floor room are we making all of those bulletproof glass i mean if a person wants to get in they're going to get in right. you know so so i think that's the point with the options based approach is that let's train our teachers to be as smart and savvy and understanding of situations as we possibly can that they they do have options that it's okay and so you know, when you train, I, I equate it a little bit to learning how to shoot a foul, a foul shot in basketball. You do the same movement over and over and over again. You know, so if we've got the same training involved with putting teachers in different scenarios, then they're going to get better at it. You know, they're going to be able to think a little bit better on their feet. Bridget. Um, I just wanted to echo uh, Michelle's point that I think this would be a good topic to have some community engagement around, mm -hmm. particularly at the elementary school, mm -hmm. where I think it is a real concern for parents. Yeah, it absolutely is. And, it and it should be. And it should be, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's a, we all can feel the same way um, that before it gets rolled out as a oh, yeah. change, but having those conversations and, yeah. and some apparent night would be. And there's some horrible. extremes, mm -hmm. you know, that we will not be doing. Yeah. You know, like yeah. one person yeah. told, one person in education told me, well, we should have every kid have a pet rock on their desk so oh, that geez. they can, and I was like, don't you dare put a pet rock on my kids. No. <laughs> I was like, no way do I ever want an adult to tell my, to tell my child that it's okay to throw a rock. Like, I could be a stranger in a room, up to be pelted yeah. with rocks, mm -hmm. you know, like, so I, like, some people are, are going to that extent because they're scared, you yeah. know, so you understand that perspective, and at the same time, we don't need it, you know, like, it's a, it's a, we don't need that. So in, in terms of involving the, to stay, can I just stay on this for a second? Sure. In terms sure. of involving the community, our options are a parent night, you, you two seem to think would be a good idea for this. What would that look like? An invitation to come and talk mm -hmm. about safety in the school. Mm -hmm. Well, the, so the par each school has a, like a PTA, mm -hmm. right? They are all called something right. different. But, um, they're they all the have monthly meetings and team. they usually have a topic right. and so it could be a topic at one of those meetings those meetings are really poorly attended yeah, yeah. so you would have to do That's some outreach in advance to say we're thinking about training everybody and that might be scary to people come talk about it together and mm -hmm. 
but just to get people to process it, even if oh, yeah. they like go are going mainly, if their main way of processing it is to like go crazy on Facebook, which will probably happen. The, at least, least for it a has second. everybody kind of working through all the different arguments. This is a very uh, fragile and sensitive issue, I think, and Definitely um, I think how we go about approaching this with the community should be very thoughtful mm -hmm. in, in terms of the process. I, I don't know if the PTA group's the best way to go. Maybe it is the best way to go. Maybe going through having administration and the PTA come together and say, hey, what do you think? How, how do we do outreach on this? Because outreach alone can even, you know, cause a lot of concern, as it, as yeah. it should to a certain extent. But um, how do we engage the community in this in a productive manner, I think, is... Another good thing that we actually have on our side for being so late yeah. <laughs> in this in this work is that other districts have done this right. and that they've made their mistakes and we can mm. learn from them, right. right? So I my kids are in CESU, and I know that I get very thoughtful parent letters multiple times a year concerning this. I also get phone calls should they ever do an evacuation, even if it's just for a drill. Um, and and you know Jericho Elementary was evacuated twice in the fall because of a gas leak. Right, so yeah. they had to use that procedure. They got a lot of practice, and I don't think my kids ever gone to church so much because of their evacuation <laughs> place. <laughs> um, but uh, so, and every time we got a phone call from the the district saying this happened, this is what you know. Like, I think their their process is really thoughtful, um, and it makes me feel okay as a parent. And my child has never done anything other than, you know, the typical um, clear the halls and what you know what our kids have already done in Montpelier, but we we're, we know about it as parents. So I've been keeping all of those, <laughs> you know, throughout the year. So I think that, um, I think we can learn a lot from other other school districts and how they're communicating with the with the parent community, most definitely. So one, one thing that I've noticed from the Facebook situation with regard to the lead in the water mm -hmm. is that all the, there were a lot of parents on Friends of Montpelier yeah. schools saying, why am I only hearing about this on Facebook? But they had all received letters from their principal, well, a letter yeah. from you via the principal regular communication. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, Facebook is a little more compelling than the principal's weekly letter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, principal, I like this one But But I wonder whether I, I think that parents, particularly of younger students, pay more attention to communication from their classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. You just referred to that a minute yeah. ago. So it might be the, that the most effective way of reaching parents is communication directly from their classroom, classroom teacher. And then maybe doing a district event rather than a four mm -hmm. different PTAs event. But to have the initial communication come from classroom teachers, then have a district event. Mm -hmm. that's specifically on that that makes it a little bit of a big deal mm -hmm. yeah especially the elementary school if you put something like in their folders because I mean that's that's where I get it I yeah. put it in her, her weekly folder that yeah. Comes down. Um, yeah, my daughter. yeah and that's where like I think the issue really is because I think at the particularly at the high school level I think kids can process it and they're you know mm -hmm. they're very aware of the threat okay. but you know to a, a first or second grader the concept is yeah. Mm -hmm can be very scary and you know it's kind of like with that desk drill yeah. and, and the other question I'd love to have answered is uh, you know how effective is it to involve the kids how effective and necessary right. and, and, and to what extent that's being debated right now yeah um, so one parent I don't remember who it was but one parent did email Ryan who Ryan by the way thankfully is very knowledgeable in this yeah um, and he's an excellent communicator I find um, with parents in particular so I think we have a good person at the helm to be doing this at the at the elementary school, um, and so and Ryan actually was one of the first people to say, "This isn't in place. No. What's yeah. happening?" You know, <laughs> um, but one parent did did send in an article from the Atlantic or something saying we can do this without the kids, mm -hmm. um, and Ryan's like, "Yeah, we can. You know, <laughs> you know, we can do this without the kids. We just have to make it. We just have to make decisions about that. And we haven't had a chance as a leadership team to discuss yeah. it." <coughs> um, Tina, you've been very patient. <laughs> well, that's okay. I, I, the police chief in Montpelier, Tony, would yeah. also tell you that given the last few years, <laughs> we've had some incidents. I think we tend to think in Vermont, it's not going to happen here. It's not going to mm -hmm. happen to us. And so we have to be ready for it. So yeah. um, 
the we issue don't lock our the, cars. Right. Yeah. We, right. <laughs> well, the issue of not involving the kids, I always say in other organizations is where I've dealt with Tony, and that our kids are better than anybody at a fire drill. If you ask a parent, a parent group, if we had a fire drill in this school, it's the parents you'll have to watch out for. The kids know exactly what to do. So there is something to sort of, as you said, have that memory ready, whether it's the adults in charge or the kids in charge, of what do you do so you're just not yeah. all crazy when it happens. Mm -hmm. And I think the police chief would say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're very much a part of these conversations. Um, right. So Matt is very close with him. And Well, I'm and thinking Matt's that also about the community discussion, it's the parents of the elementary kids that we want to inform that it actually could happen here and we have to have a procedure in place, and then the issue of what you tell the kids or what you don't. Mm -hmm. So, we're, so no, we're being thoughtful about that, and we're taking our time in deciding, um, and of, of the student piece, most definitely. We'll, we're, we've learned, we'll, we'll learn a lot from other places, and um, but we do need to get on it for our staff, most definitely, soon. And, and so those plans are in place. Yeah, and I think, and this is probably also difficult to talk about, but. Yeah, the importance of having these procedures in place, because one of the things that's coming out with the Homer Douglas tragedy was that there are a lot of procedures that were simply not followed that could have made a difference in that situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yes. it's hard to know yeah. them when it's an emergency. Yep. If you've never practiced them before, reading them on a card isn't going to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think they, that a place like that probably had very similar mentality of it's not going to happen here. Yeah. But if you haven't listened to the NBR po podcast about Fairhaven, it's a five-episode mm -hmm. podcast from VPR. Just do it one day when you're cleaning your house. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's when I did it. It's a, I mean, I literally listened all five in one day. It was not a huge deal. Um, but it's definitely eye-opening. It was very well done. And it was, it was eye-opening. And it, was, um, it showed what the school needed to do for that situation. So I highly recommend people listening to that, that podcast. That's it. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So we are shockingly right on schedule. Um, <laughs> come on, Jim. Give yourself more credit. You sound surprised. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm actually surprised at how frequently we're on schedule. Any <laughs> <laughs> other boards that have been around? Uh, this is a very efficient board. Um, it is. Um, it is a very efficient board. <laughs> so discussion, budget. Um, plan budget information night, which is what the fifth, and Roxbury Town Meeting. Just um, quick discussion about what our plan should be for disseminating information about the budget to the community, um, including right now we have lined up, and I know is putting together the details. Um, she and I are going to. Mostly she. Uh, <laughs> Mostly Grant. Who are we talking Mostly about? <laughs> um, are going to present uh, as we always do. It's changed a little because we're not technically part of the city anymore. Um, are we doing it with the city? No, we're doing it separately. I think we're going to do it either in the cafeteria or the uh, library at the high school. On the fourth in the evening. Yeah, in the evening. It's January fourth. March. March 4th. Oh, January 4th is already. We're planning ahead. How long did that last year? It wasn't. It was like two people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do that. Um, I have an op ed with a bridge that I'm waiting to hear back whether or not Mike Dunphy is going to publish it. It's, just, it's informative. Um, it says wonderful things about the budget, but it, it's fairly informative. Um, and I think that's most of what we have planned for Montpelier. We're not doing a postcard thing this year because one, it, we didn't get out in the past years, and then we looked into you know, and it, and it, we still had good results. So we looked at the cost, and the cost was not, not worth it. Do you remember it. what it was? I think it was over a thousand dollars. Yeah. A lot. Um, so we're going to do the information night. Um, yeah, and I, I think it's also a pretty pretty straightforward budget. I think you know next year when we're probably having a budget that's going to be around some 
you know, some more initiatives um, we might want to do. But I think we'll be doing things throughout the year to, you know. And that's in Montpelier. Montpelier at the high school, six to seven. Yep. On March fourth, and Heather's putting together a yep, and Heather's yep. putting together a flyer slash warning yeah. for that over yep. the next day or two. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a great budget, but it's I don't think it's a budget that requires a ton of explaining. Um, and Roxbury's about Roxbury? meeting. So yeah. Ryan's talked about it a little bit. You want to talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, I guess maybe so. The more your folks understand, this will be a big change for Roxbury this year. Um, last year during the transition, it was a little bit different because the old district still existed. So historically, Roxbury's town meeting is split between the town and the school district. Um, so literally, it's half the day for the school and half the day for the town. Uh, we have always done the budget presentation like we're doing on the 4th, um, which, like we saw for our district last year, was usually not terribly well attended. and in years past, the school board has either given a presentation or it's fairly involved for what the school board had done at town meeting. And I just wanted to kind of discuss a little bit with the board, maybe what the precedent would be going forward. Um, I personally don't think it makes sense with the new district for the Roxbury representatives to really spend time at town meeting doing anything because it's not part of town meeting anymore. But I do know this year, I've been getting a lot of questions in town. Like, Geez, I hear town meeting's only going to be an hour this year. What's going on at town meeting? And are they, is it, is, will there even be a lunch this lunch? year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, then. <laughs> and so it will be a big change this year. And I just kind of wanted to have a quick discussion maybe about what the precedent should be and to be a little bit on the same page. So, um, Do you have an Australian ballot or you vote by off the floor? So our budget will be an Australian ballot, but then the rest of the town stuff is on the floor. And are right. there... Um, Legal limits on whether you can talk about the stuff that's on Australian ballot? I don't hmm. think so. We would have, in the past, the Roxbury School Board's budget would have been Australian ballot as it was required to be, but it would you would still have questions. It doesn't mean anything because you're still voting, but we wouldn't change the budget on the floor. But you would, more often than not, could you my, change the budget on the floor? No, no, no. not when it's on the Australian ballot. Because it's been warned. Yeah. Yeah. My experience in the past as a board member for Roxbury has been you kind of recreate the budget presentation again on the floor, um, which is kind of silly. But we can yeah. do it. Yeah. It's not like we can't. Grant could do, Grant and I could do the same um, presentation that we do in the informational hearing in Montpelier here in Roxbury during town meeting. It's not going to be a half day presentation. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but then the. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky because technically there's nothing on the town meeting agenda for the school district because we have our own meeting. Uh, so when I had talked with the, our, the Roxbury town clerk, who's also the district okay, town yeah, clerk, yeah. Um, probably about a month ago about, hey, kind of, what are you guys thinking about town meeting this year? She and the moderator had said that they had discussed maybe at the end of Roxbury's town meeting, there's time for other stuff that maybe Lisa or I would want to do something then. but. That's really kind of just piggybacking on in an informal way, mm -hmm. but uh, so it's not like even if you and Grant did want to come down yeah, and present we, that, we will be we'll be here to support you if you want. Yeah, I mean it's not like we can say it will happen at this time or it's on the agenda. It would just be. Oh, and is by there, the is way, is there any other here. business that wants that needs to be addressed at town meeting? Uh, um, Lisa so and I, as if, Roxbury if representatives, have could questions for you, right? Yeah. But um, could in. It's probably too late for this year's town meeting, but could in future years it, it be an official item on town meeting? I don't think we're totally separate now. We have our own district, we have our own... So because it's yeah. not like a town business thing. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. It definitely couldn't be yeah. changed on the floor because Roxbury couldn't pass a budget that was different than the district's. Right. It's right. just an opportunity when the community comes it's together, together. together to talk right. about it. And that's what, like, as a representative, as an elected school. member, we could stand there and talk or get asked questions, but, yeah. Do you think, especially at this point where the tax rates are frozen, do you think people are likely to be more interested in the budget or more interested in, like, how it's the school. going? Yeah. <laughs> like, how yeah. the words are going, what, like, yeah. an update on sort of how it works and who goes yeah. where and when the bus is run. And yes. mm -hmm. That tends to be a lot of what the questions come down to. Yeah. You'll have some budget hawks who were this changed this or that changed that and we want some specific answers but more often than not it's hey what are they doing in our class and yeah, so it's kind of the more of a promotion of the district and the schools and um, 
But your so. budget hawks, I don't think. I mean, Roxbury's tax rate is going down as or as it much. Is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it can't go any lower right. based on the law. So yeah. but people still like to think. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so like I, I know it's spending. maybe precedent setting, but. I think it's nice for the superintendent to be here. Oh, I'm already, I'm already planning on being there. Because yeah. oh, that, okay. when I was a principal of the school, I liked it when the yeah. superintendent was there, so that if there no, Grant and I will both be here <laughs> for that. We just need to know what time. It's on our schedule. Great. And kind of back to Bridget's question, because I know that there's a kind of a zone where you can't talk about items. Yeah, near when the, I lived in near Randolph, the, that was a thing. There was like a still, meeting where they talked about some things at an Australian ballot, and at the meeting you couldn't talk about stuff that was on the ballot. So that, that was where that question yeah, was. Well, it wasn't school issues. It was the right. town. It was like campaigning stuff. Yeah. Well, and even in Montpelier, because you're not allowed to talk about any items on the ballot past a certain point mm -hmm. at the voting place. Well, within, mm -hmm. within 200 feet or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So if you're actually, if people this are is not this is not the where the but where they vote it's for that. Vote. Very, okay, my okay. understanding. It is. It's the same. So everything happens yeah. in the town hall. Even the the polling place no. is in the That's corner. Exactly. Oh, I was so told not. Like I was told that nothing happening. The machine yeah. while the meeting is yeah. happening. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because no one's noticed. Well, I, I think oh. that's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it might be potentially an issue too, because I think I think the. The idea is that people aren't supposed to be hovering over you and pressuring you in the actual moment of voting. You could call the Secretary of State's office. Yeah. 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 I guess I could run it past the, well, the town clerk and the district clerk are the same person. I could chat with her about she would that know. concern. But and if you, yeah. well, my guess asked. is she's, she's pretty on the ball, so my guess yeah. is she's she probably this. asked yeah. this or it's mm -hmm. somehow okay in this situation, because she does seem to be. Yeah, she, the, she would know. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so in the past, you had an Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. And you still had half the day as a school issue. Yes. In the same building where people voted. Yes. Where people had already voted. Yep. Or were in or the were process, in the of, process voting. of voting. I mean, yes. you know, I, that doesn't seem like Well, that makes me work, nervous if I say something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like her. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that yeah. is strange. So. so I'll be there most of the day. Sounds like Libby, you'll be there uh -huh. later in the day, too. So. Yeah, do you yeah. know what time -ish? It starts at 10, and then it really depends on <laughs> how but the are conversation is. But you sure they should come at, at lunchtime, <laughs> like 11.30 or noon, yes. hang for lunch, and then yeah. Yeah. you guys serve. Lunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. I'm, good at, I'm good at serving those. Yes, I'm yeah. going to a fundraiser yeah. meal for the school. I'm, you, I'm pretty good at serving those by this point. <laughs> All right. I will plan on coming at 11:30, and I will bring my cohort with me. That was my suggestion. You might check in with um, Tammy. Missy. Is that when lunch is happening? Do you know? Or meeting's over. <laughs> <laughs> or or at a, one person, appropriate lunch. One person lunch. says it's gonna be about an hour. Uh, others say probably 12. <laughs> Helpful. Okay. 12 hours <laughs> and 12 o'clock. Safe. The I moderator is it Cinda again? Yeah. yeah. It would also be another good person to talk to if you're okay. I mean they don't they just don't know it's you just never know I talk to Steve probably it depends on how long yeah conversations go on for yeah them, so. and generally we'll be here longer than anticipated okay. so anything more on the uh, the Roxbury meeting or the information night the budget vote, our votes are aggregated, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's all lumped together. Yeah. All lumped together, exactly. Um, we I mean, we get them we still separately. See them yeah. 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 We see them separately and we get them separately because right. yeah, they're reported out from the various towns. But in terms of what counts, the it's yeah. the total total. Yeah, yeah the total total. Um, if I recall, last year they were relatively proportional in terms of yes and no's. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so board superintendent performance reviews. Um, we can do the board portion and open session. Um, I really put this report together. I have to admit, I wrote it quickly. Um, but I think the overall thing I'd like to say. I'm not going to read it all, but um, I actually think I think actually think we've done a great job. Um, kind of coming together, putting this new. 
district together. I know that it's required um, a lot of work uh, on all your parts, and everybody's pitched in really well. Um, I want to give a special shout out to Bridget, who has navigated through the policies um, wonderfully. Not that everybody doesn't deserve a shout out, but um, uh, and the whole policy uh, committee, Ryan and um, and Steve, for for really guiding that process. We kind of almost started from scratch, um, uh, but you know everybody has stepped up. You know, putting together the superintendent evaluation process, which didn't have in place before. Uh, stepping up for negotiations, um, you know. So uh, I think a, a really you know great job um, on on getting this this district off the ground and, and pitching in and and taking the responsibility seriously and taking the work seriously. So I, I'm really um, super pleased with with the effort we've all uh, put together. Um, yeah, I also think we've, we've kind of tightened up some procedures, particularly kind of communication with the administration. I think it had fallen apart a little, at least on the Montpelier part, uh, just because of the situation that, you know, we were in. But um, I think we've tightened up some procedures. And, um, you know, I, I think the, 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 the various roles and lanes are, are a little clearer, but both clearer and I also think people feel a little maybe more empowered in their, their lanes. Um, so, and there's just in terms of places to work, I think we can always work on, on communication and kind of when to communicate out and, and how to communicate out. Um, you know, obviously we had, I think, I think we had a learning experience with the after school program. Um, and we've also, I think, had some, some good communication issues too. I think, you know, we've, you know, moving the transportation issue forward. I think we did a very good job of involving the community and, you know, Libby brought, Parents in, and I think that was an issue that had, you know, kind of hit a stumbling block for a year. That we did a very good job of, of moving through. Um, so that's just kind of my overview. Again, thank you, everyone. I'd love to just open it up for feedback, and also feedback on what I could do better, because, um, you know, this is uh, a relatively new role for me, also. Um, and you know, we'll decide next meeting whether I continue again, but I would like to. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to, to you know, hear feedback on what I can do better and, and what, you know, kind of the information you've gotten from Libby and me, you know, what's worked, what hasn't, what could be more helpful, um, et cetera, just so we can, uh, I think particularly on the board getting the information it needs and then, you know, the board um, and the community and the administration communicating what needs to be communicated. I'll start. Okay. So, um, Go ahead, newbie. Yeah. As the newest member of the board, I'll start. Thank Jim, I think you're doing an incredible job. Oh, I just you. want to give you major kudos. And I, I hope you, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that you're planning to continue being the chair because I think you're doing a really tremendous job. So thank you very much. Um, in terms of improvement, I think one thing, one area where we can continue to improve is um, on the communication side. And I think that goes for the board and the administration. And when you were talking before, Michelle, about how, well, we sent things home, but it comes up on Facebook, I think we can do a better job of leveraging numerous platforms at the same time. When information goes out, I think we can use a coordinated strategy that will get out to all those platforms at once so that there, we don't have these lags going on. Um, I, I think, I, and that's like a simple thing. These aren't like, this is like a really small thing, but I think it can have a big, uh, impact for the community in terms of feeling more involved and uh, just getting better access to information more promptly. That's my only thought. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's a great suggestion. And I noticed actually a parent did that with some stuff on Swoop Scoop that was really good that I actually saw on Facebook before I saw it in Swoop Scoop. Uh, but Ryan shared um, some stuff on Race in Vermont and Race in Our Schools that was, you know, that actually Libby and I had seen at the uh, VSBA conference. Oh, the, the, the movie? Yeah. Um, it was a powerful movie. It was a, yeah, it We're was very so well done. proud of our people. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I was so Me too, proud. to see familiar faces. Yeah. yeah. It was wonderful. I live here too, is that it? Yeah. yeah. I'm from here too. I'm from yeah. here, yeah. Um, I had Emmanuel yeah. and yeah. his daughter as, as famous people. Headbutt. Yeah. Speaking of those types of movies, has anybody here seen that the new NEA 
um, film about diversity and racial issues in Vermont schools. There's a number of Montpelier students who were interviewed, and it's it's. Um, is, uh, are you talking about the same? I think you're talking, you're talking about, about the same. Oh, is it the same yeah. one? Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It is. But you know, there's a where, it, you know, Ryan sent it out, and then someone put it on Facebook, and my guess is. Probably. The Facebook hit more people than Brian's <laughs> post. And the person who put it on Facebook was just a parent. Yeah. Instead but, of like the school. Well, if the school. Had yeah, this is an important point, Lisa, because there is a Facebook group called Friends of Montpelier yeah. Schools, yeah. which has many, many more subscribers than the school. <laughs> and so all of the parent conversation happens in Friends of Montpelier Schools instead of happening in the school. So we need to get those people moved over so that they yeah. get the That's a really good point, Michelle. Mm -hmm. You're trying to push for people to subscribe to the school feeds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Following the school. Because because everything that goes yeah. out is on school Facebook, school Twitter, school Instagram. Right. Like it's it's on all three platforms. And I'm appreciating with being someone with no children in the school system getting all of the newsletters from the principal, being on the board, that helps. I think if you don't have a child in the elementary school, for example, you, right. so I appreciate getting all of that. And I will say also, I think you're a great chair, and that <laughs> I, um, I have appreciated communication from you about things that happened so that when somebody asks me, they say, I, I don't say, well, I don't, don't know anything about that and their answer is but you're on the board why wouldn't you know anything about that so you know whether it's even if it's that I can't say anything but I've got a line that I'm supposed to say I appreciate that yeah, yeah. Bridget um, I think that the learning focus actually, parts of the meeting have been great I really appreciate that so I want to thank you both for yeah. keeping that content coming um, and if there's and content you want to see then just make sure we I know. did actually mention yeah. something to Jim recently, and I, I think it's now in the queue because <laughs> I saw it in something. Um, oh. But uh, I, I was thinking when you're, we were talking about communication and parent outreach that we now have things happening at almost every meeting that's like sort of substantive content that I yeah. think a lot of parents would actually like to access. And so I would just put out in the hopper trying to think about ways to to make that more accessible, you know, that they don't, they wouldn't have to like start the orca video and watch the whole well it is oh, just take just take, just take yeah. pieces but out of it yeah, okay. yeah. you just did this great presentation about what's going on yeah, safety. Like you could yeah, turn yeah, it into yeah. a 10 minute video that we could put out yeah, yeah, yeah. If parents wanted to see that piece could watch it so. Um, are you, you able that? to make chapters in it? Yeah, yes. on our on our website. Um, and we're actually, what we could do is do it on the website and just copy over the time. It's like put in the time code when each agenda item starts. Yeah, yeah. that's actually it's sort of my case. job, and I just want to drop the ball on that. Hard to get good help these days. That's a good idea. I do have to say, the people in my age group who's talked to me sit and watch the entire school board meeting from beginning to end. And let but me tell you, we had lunch with them the other day. They asked good questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty well informed. They're watching. Yes, they they're are. watching. <laughs> I'd like to see more. No, I'm sorry. I was, oh, I was just going to mention at the last board meeting when the students participated, when our two student members participated, I thought they had great ideas. Aren't they awesome? You could tell yeah, that they worked. Yeah. That they had worked on that, and, and I, I would like, I don't know how to encourage that to happen more often, but except to just thank them every time they do it. But I thought that was a really important voice that we need to have at the board level. Yeah, I no, they, thank Libby for that, fantastic. because clearly she's been working with them about the process, the format, oh, cool. and mm -hmm. I love them. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really good. I love a presentation of their time in Mississippi. Mm. That would be oh, that they just mm -hmm. got back. Yeah, yeah. The that's actually why they're not here tonight because right. they went and then they had some makeup stuff to do and things like that. So, some of the weekend. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. they yeah, had the some district. work going on. Yep, they're a major addition to the board. Doing yeah, great. I know they've been doing fantastic. And um, I don't know if I can add this, but um, both uh, Emma and I think Oswald and Nadia um, were really instrumental in talking about um, gun reform as well. So I don't know if they would be awesome. really helpful for that conversation as well, I'm mm. sure. Not to volunteer them, but just say no. <laughs> yeah, we'll make sure we blame you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. So 
Yep, go for it. I, was I just think it would be good if we had a few minutes, minutes to talk about professional development for the board and yeah. what we would like yeah. to have. I mean, actually, I feel like the superintendent's presentations and the students' presentations, those are professional mm -hmm. development. So I think we've been getting quite a bit. But what we would like to get as a board, sort of focused on functioning as a board as opposed to learning about the educational work. I don't know if people have thoughts about that, but I, we had talked at our retreat about having some training on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And mm -hmm. That's still on my radar as something I'd like to do as a board. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's one of my duties, and so I'd love for you all to talk about what you'd like me <laughs> to, to, to make sure that you have in place, or else I'm guessing. VSBA at their annual meetings for um, mm -hmm. boards has done some great presentations on and workshops on those topics, mm -hmm. and I got a lot out of them. Um, but mostly, nobody goes. Uh, but if we could bring them to us, that would be good. Mm -hmm. And things like equity and diversity. Yeah, yeah, they have. Terrific, like they've they, had. They bring in outside. Yeah. They, 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 they bring in outside trainers. They bring in outside yeah. trainers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jim and I went to a um, session on how to hire a more diverse staff. Yes, yeah. yeah. it was interesting. Yeah. 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 So I wonder. They, if they've had some really good um, workshops and speakers on equity and diversity and inclusion. I went to a really fascinating one. Um, that was about food allergies, which I don't think that much about, but it, there, there's a whole curriculum about um, being an allergy ally and like having the whole school conform to food allergy stuff in order to like lift up their um, classmates who have allergies rather than making fun of them. So something I hadn't thought about, but it was a cool workshop. Anyway, they have lots of ideas. And since we're in the same town, if they had somebody coming for a day workshop for something, maybe they we could hook on and they do something for our board. I wonder if having some sessions on actual communication, mm -hmm. um, especially with, you know, with social media, managing social right. media, getting stuff out, platforms, um, yeah, I mean, none of us with the possible exception of Andrew is a professional communicator. <laughs> it's been a while, though. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, it's, it's an art form. And, and, you know, we have a tough and dynamic communicator. I think kind of all of us learning, you know, how do you get people off of, I mean, not off of Friends of Public Schools, but how do you, you know, take some of those discussions and, and get people to places where they're getting, information. you know, information. Um, how do you handle, like, honestly, some of the swirls that happen on social media? Right. Um, the posts that have 85 comments. Yes. Yeah. Do you uh, comment or do you not comment? And yes. You and yeah. do you make it worse or better by you. trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what some people would say with the Friends of Montpelier situation is, well, you already have this big uh, conglomeration of folks that you want to communicate with. Why, just use it. why, yeah, just use it. Why, why try to shift them elsewhere? Just start incorporating that into your repertoire if you know that there's such a maybe we send it there when we send something, yeah. I, I mean, but there's, there's a, I mean, the issue I have with that is when you start communicating to a self selected Special, yeah. private yes. audience, yeah. you're yes, not communicating problem. with other audiences. That's a problem. Right. We could talk with uh, one and, of the and organizers. We don't administer it. Either, yeah. So we, we don't. Could, yeah. And I've instructed my principals not to go there. Okay. It's not healthy for them. So yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we, we could talk. We could talk. As as a board, we know some of the main organizers of of that group. We can talk with them about um, keying off of uh, but our site to bring more information there. But I think there's, I mean, I think there's a communication role for the administrators and there's a communication role for the board, and it's slightly different because I think, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, like Libby should not be playing in the Friends of, of right. Montpelier oh, school space yeah. at all. Yeah. But I think we have yeah. some role mm -hmm. and figuring that role out, you know, and, and, you know, other platforms too is, is tricky and I'm not sure any of us really know how to do it. I don't. So yeah. I, I, that would so be nice to get training. a training. Uh, yeah. yeah, some sort of training on that. Yeah, so I would definitely agree that the communications theme makes sense. 
what would we envision for these trainings? Would we think about piggybacking them on to a normal meeting or maybe have smaller retreats more frequently throughout the year? Like how would we legitimately commit ourselves question. to making yeah. this happen? Because I don't know about you guys, but our board meetings tend to run fairly late and yeah. <laughs> thinking about adding on another hour of training for a meeting isn't productive in my mind. No, right. It's like, how are we gonna do this? I would think of like a half day here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let, let, let me and I give it some thought. Um, mm -hmm. Just be cognizant of time, too, because, but. But I think, you know, those couple of issues, <coughs> you know, if we had a half day on each, would be very helpful. It, yeah. it actually might work even better to put in, we have a terrible time finding a half day in the summer that everybody's going to be here. Maybe it would be more logical to put it in the calendar sometime during the school year. School year, And maybe we'd have better luck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Um, especially maybe in spring when we're off the budget. Yeah, we're off the budget and things get a little looser here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well we'll uh we'll come back with some mm -hmm. kind of more concrete proposals <coughs> on how to do that. Um, well, just one second. Bridget, when you started on that topic, it sounded like you were interested in training for the board in how to function as a board and not necessarily on topics. Yeah, that too. But I like these two topics. <laughs> 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 That's kind of dry. I, I just didn't want to lose that because yes. I think that would be helpful also. I think, uh, and, and that's something you can do at a board meeting, I think. I mean, I don't think it has to be. Well, VSBA has thing. to have a lot of. Yeah, they have a lot of. Pre plan webinars, and yeah, that would definitely be something that we could take advantage of from VSBA. Our membership has historically been resistant to those trainings, yeah. but maybe yeah, this current board would. Yeah, it would embrace it. And we talked in the past about new board members. Now we have all the the board members that are coming uh, that are up for election are the board members that are here. So that'll be okay for the next round. But I think it's important to talk about when you have somebody new that comes on. What is it? What's the what about all the tough committees? And what do we do? We <laughs> said I went to those and <laughs> <laughs> instead of piling on the committee assignment. For example, going to those new board member right. things, I went to them too, but yeah. people have not gone. And what is, maybe it's a discussion with somebody who's running to say, this is our expectation. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, I think we do. Doesn't the expectations policy outline that the new, new board members yes. are given some of the, all the policies and given some orientation? It does say that. I believe so. Well, but I think we I can did formalize it. The more. SBA, you know. Send it to me on behalf of all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, me. I found the BSBA training helpful. Yeah. yeah. I, first mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. I've gone to it like three times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the in person training? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I haven't unfortunately had time for that. I have looked at some of the materials. I was trying to always set a good example to get people to. Yeah. So who is up for re-election? You were for a short term, and you're coming on board. Steve, Steve. and I are both up for re-election. Okay. We're running. That's right. Opposed. And opposed, as is Lisa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And are you running for a full term, or are you running for a partial term? Or don't you know? How do you run for a partial term? Well, because you oh, came to Peter's like, I didn't even know that. Peter, Peter was yeah. up for a regular. Okay. Okay. okay, so, so you're running for a full term. Because yes. if Peter was not up for a regular election, I think, okay. yes, I think yes, you would have had to been like. Yes. I was like, was there a way that I could have done that? You could do what Bridget did. You could run it for the board like five times. That's right. Yeah, no, Bridget did that. She like came in when someone left, and they had a year left, and so she ran for the the year and then ran again. No, Peter was up for, Peter would have been up for re-election. Right, right, this time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Great. Um, anything else on that, or should we break into executive session? Could we, could 
I be part of the evaluation committee? If oh, you yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, so we want to, Tina wants to be on the evaluations committee, and everybody on the evaluations committee thinks it's a good idea, yep. and she's no longer doing negotiations. So um, thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> she, did, she did it for like half of a session. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> It said no, thank you. Um, like it was before the ground <laughs> 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 uh, So you need a motion? Or? Yeah, a motion to um, add a member to the Super Evaluation Committee and then nominate you. So Second? Second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you, Tina, for reminding me of that. I had so can you written. please refresh the public on who, who all is on this committee? <laughs> uh, I'm the chair. Chair Jim, Bridget, Nantina, and Lisa. Yeah, and Becky's doing an awesome job as chair. Yeah, she is. No, oh, it is a committee. That's a quorum of the board. Should it not be a quorum of the board? Mm. It has to be the members because it's a I don't have Robert Schulz with me. Yeah. I don't think it. I don't think it matters because yeah. it would st you'd still be warning it like a normal meeting. Which we do. So we so. do. You wouldn't Just be taking don't be discussing other stuff. board business. We will. We have an agenda. We actually are pretty rigid. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I am personally a pretty yeah. rigid yeah. chair. <laughs> she keeps us right so, at it. Yeah. I do. It might be worth writing it by Pietro, though, just to make sure that. And um, I was trusting our parliamentarian over here. <laughs> I said, I, I'm pretty sure we're okay, but Robert's Rules is not with me this evening. And <laughs> Does Robert's Robert rules Holmes. control, or is it? Yeah, I would, is, I would be more concerned about whether it's Secretary of State. Yeah. The Secretary of State's right yeah. yeah. Should we Seems hold like off? Should okay. we hold off on approving this until we, we research this next time? Oh, we already approved it. I mean, I what we, we can we can rem, we can <laughs> remove someone legally. <laughs> I mean, the the only the legal problem I could see is if the board wanted to. Um, yeah. It Can is me? A well, so it'd be nice. <laughs> kind of like say we don't like these two people, so we're going to form a, a five-person committee and do all our business there and not invite them. Right. Type of thing. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would not be cool. That would be yeah. Cool. <laughs> so let's clear that up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. You might have to play rock paper scissors to get Yeah. That. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's true. I, I can just observe. If you could be ex officio. I could be ex officio mm -hmm. or. Emeritus or something. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, I was thinking in the beginning that's what you said. Huh? That you were. I yeah, think that's, that's what you but said a, at the beginning that a, these people would be on and you just sit in. Sometimes. Yeah, I think I think I said something, but I think I I got I, I think I did a, get appointed. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we we'll may have to go back and look. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Go back look at the minutes. Um, okay. Um, so now we need a motion. Ooh. We need first a motion that um, uh, so we're the doing ground. A, well, we're not. Uh, we're doing contract negotiations too. But, but oh, negotiations. Thank you for yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So yes, we are right. So we need a motion. For, I move that we find a discussing contract negotiations in public session would put the district at a disadvantage. The second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And then we're going in for two reasons? Then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I move that we enter executive session for the purpose of discussing contract negotiations and employee yeah. evaluations. Yep. Second. Second. Aye. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.